Okay, so system design examples, remember those five questions, sources, displays, distances, resolution, and control. And if you're doing the audio, if you need more than just video, you, you also need audio, then you can also um, make sure to ask what are your audio sources and your audio zones. So again, we talk about the foundations of HDMI, how to make it reliable. We talk about uh, how to now design systems uh, reliably and have shown you plenty of uh, real world examples, uh, success stories, if, if you will, uh, case studies of our system and the power of our system. Um, and yet again, there's another evolution in our industry. That's AV over IP, very popular, very big buzz right now. We have two ways of achieving video walls with our products. We actually have a really, really cost effective video wall processor. It's not AV over IP. It's think of it like a traditional rec, one rack U matrix switch with four inputs and four outputs. So it can build a maximum of a four display video wall. So if you're doing like two by two here, or even if you wanted to do four by one, horizontal, three by one, two by one, or vertical, you'd like some nice signage as people enter the theater, for example, a nice video wall, uh, vertical, almost like you see in the fashion and retail side, four, four high, three high, two high, or one high. That's our model VW 4x4 Pro. And uh, price point is really, really good on that. Now, uh, and that also gives you the ability to have four sources plugged in as well. So you could do, uh, you know, one, two, three, four if you need. Um, but if you're doing a video wall, it's all just the same source. Um, and that can be located behind the displays uh, and, uh, you know, everything right there locally. Regarding AV over IP, if you're only trying to build a video wall out of the AV over IP and you don't need to have like a centralized location for your network switch, you could go and get you, we have on our uh, verified network switch guide, it's an eight port with uh, good PoE powering, so, so it powers all of your encoders and decoders as well, and just have one, one encoder for your video source if you just need one, and four decoders for those displays, or X amount of decoders for however many displays you need. You can see our uh, AV over IP 922s and 1022s, they actually have dual LAN ports on them. And so we've actually built a video wall upstairs, a mosaic video wall of that, which is like unique uh, orientation and, and like decorating. And um, on that mosaic video wall, we're using just one encoder and four decoders. And so what we're doing actually is no network switch at all. The encoder network feeds decoder one. This dual, the second LAN port of decoder one feeds at decoder two, its LAN port. Second LAN port feeds decoder three to decoder four. So um, really, really cool stuff. And, uh, and that's only in the instance of two things. Number one, of course, we still need to have our power to each unit. So we're using power supplies instead of PoE because there is no network switch. And um, number two, we are, um, we're, uh, it, it's just one source. There's a limitation of only one source because you can't do switching that way without a network switch. Um, and of course, something like that you want to consult with key digital on first um, you know there's limitations of if that were like a you know a 25 panel video wall you might hit a limitation there of being able to cascade the network connection so uh, again the industry is uh, is uh, always pushing the boundaries of technology and always uh, finding new ways to do things to do things better and AV over IP seems to be that next frontier for many people um, of course, we've been doing it for like five years now at Key Digital, so it's almost reminiscent of that early days of HDMI matrixing where people said, uh, you know, they looked, they kicked the tires, but they maybe didn't get started yet because um, they had some mental obstacles, mental hurdles that they were trying to get over themselves. Now, I just want to start off by saying we are going to go in-depth into products, AV over IP products, later this afternoon. But as for right now, I just want to teach you about AV over IP and prepare you for those systems, the design considerations um, and the new uh, thought processes that need to go into uh, building 
systems with AV over IP. So as I mentioned earlier, AV over IP is very popular right now because it uses the network switch as the center point of the system, as the backbone of the system. Um, it's very flexible. You can have uh, however many sources you need, video sources, just get one encoder. However many displays, get a decoder. So in this system, we've got four sources, but not sure if you could see it or not, but each display is actually times six here. So we got four sources and 42 displays. So you pick up four encoders, you pick up 42 decoders, and you plug them into your network switch there after configuring the network switch, of course, as we'll talk about. So essentially, we have a matrix we just built, right? What if it was one source to 42 displays? Now we're using it in place of a distribution amp or four sources and only one display. Now we're using it in, in, in place of a switcher. So essentially it's replacing all of the traditional HDMI signal management product categories um, because it's all network based. You could connect fiber from one network switch to the other to uh, interconnect them, enabling you to uh, interconnect buildings or floors throughout a building. Um, and all you need is a single cat wire to each display. We'll go into more detail here. So there are some now, uh, now with AV over IP, some very important design considerations. Number one, do you want to do 4K or 1080p? We do have two flavors of product at Key Digital. Number two, what are you going to do with audio? Well, not all of our products have the D-embed on both the encoder side and the decoder side. Additionally, some products have higher latency than others. And so uh, these are considerations what are you going to do with audio? How many unique zones of audio? Do you need a mix of all the audio sources? Or can you just send one source to each zone at a time? Those sort of con uh, considerations you need to, you need to th uh, think through. Uh, control th from the free Key Digital app by a professional control system. Compass Control being built into a lot of these products. Um, or by third party. We actually use the exact same matrix switching command with these products as all of our matrix switchers have used for over a decade. So it's very easy to control by third party. Those drivers are already existing. How many total endpoints and the endpoint location, endpoints, encoders, decoders. Uh, if it's more than 48, now you're looking at two network switches. Or, um, as has happened to some of the uh, folks on the uh, meeting here today, sometimes you have a whole bunch of encoders, decoders on one side of the building, and you have a new set of um, encoders and decoders on, uh, on another side of the building. And they want to make one system out of it, but you only have one fiber hop from network switch one to network switch two. And that could cause problems, of course, if, uh, it, well, first of all, due to bandwidth calculations and whatnot. So we gotta, we'll take you through those steps. Are you doing a video wall or not? And of course, the most important thing of all this, guys, you have to use, you must use a verified network switch. One of the switches that we've not only said the features will work, but we've put through long-term testing, law, age testing in our labs here. Um, so, <clears throat> How does AV over IP work? Well, it uses what's called multicasting technology. A video source feeds an encoder, and that encoder uh, broadcasts that signal, that data, throughout the entire network switch. So it essentially could flood the network with that data. Of course, the network switch itself requires IGMP to ensure that it doesn't flood. So to make it work, this multicasting, we harness it through IGMP, Internet Grouping Management Protocol. Think of IGMP as the traffic police so that it's ensuring that only the intended displays are receiving the, uh, the stream, the broadcast, from the encoder. Um, each of our network switches on our uh, guide uh, support a minimum of uh, 1G bandwidth. Uh, some of them are higher. Um, 8K jumbo frame is needed for our 4K system. 8K jumbo frame is basically enables larger than typical, lar larger than traditional uh, size network packets to go through ports. Um, 
sometimes that might be 9K, 10K. I've even, I think, seen 11K. I could be wrong about that. And again, our, we have, it must be our verified network switch guide. It meets these criterion. They've passed age testing and we list them on our website and we have a how-to for configuring those network switches. Very, very easy. All, it's mostly pictures for each one. Now we have a full assortment of AV over IP products beginning with our IP 1080s released over five years ago and going through and having six different SKUs in the 4K realm. We'll go into what that means for you uh, in more depth later this afternoon. Um, but let's tell you again, let's speak about the basics, the technology first. Here is our IP uh, for our 4K supported system. That's your model's IP 822 encoder and decoder, 922 encoder and decoder, and 1022 encoder and decoder. They are all using Motion JPEG 2000. This is actually what most AV over IP, 4K AV over IP systems are using throughout the entire industry. Um, Motion JPEG 2000 has a maximum bandwidth of less than 900 megabits per second. Let's call it 850. I like to round up because it makes you be a little more conservative in your numbers there. Um, at 4K resolution, every single source is 850 megabits per second. Think about that bandwidth there, okay? Uh, very, very important. At 1080p, 250 megabits per second. Uh, 720p, 1080i, 125. Now, with Motion JPEG 2000, it supports 4K. So what does that tell you? It's a very mild compression. Mild compression equals high bandwidth, but also then equals low latency. You're looking at 40 milliseconds, which is approximately one frame behind the original content with Motion JPEG 2000 applied. Now that's a very fortunate number, 40 milliseconds. Um, in latency studies, when you are exceeding 50 milliseconds per second, the user begins to recognize that there is a latency problem through the Kung Fu effect, video from audio separation, or even if they're using keyboard, uh, mouse, excuse me, for uh, like a network operation center, that mouse may appear to lag slightly, and that becomes frustrating. But this whole system is beneath that, uh, that, uh, that recognition point for latency for users. Uh, each unit uses less than nine watts uh, PoE power. Now, very, very important. These systems, the 4K system, because they could do close to 1G bandwidth, you gotta use a Cat6 cable. Cat5e, Cat5, they don't have the required bandwidth to support this system. So this is really, um, I don't want to call it for new installs only, because of course a lot of you guys have been running Cat6 for years and years now, but it doesn't work over Cat5, Cat5e. Uh, <clears throat> now on the other hand, we have our IP1080 system, as the name implies, 1080p resolution. So it does support Cat5e. You want to stay away from Cat5. For this system. It's using H264 compression, H.264. Who's uh, familiar with this? Show of hands. We would all be raising our hands right now, whether you know it or not. Netflix uses H264. Um, if you've been watching Tiger King at home, when we record this video or when we uh, post this video on our channel, it's going to date the uh, content right there by just mentioning Tiger King. Dwayne down in Oklahoma, buddy? You got to watch this Tiger King show. Holy smokes, this is this is unreal. Uh, sorry, Netflix will send us the check in the mail because uh, we just gave them a free plug. Um, H264. So we're familiar with it. We're familiar with the quality you get from H264. It e higher compression equals lower bandwidth, less than 15 megabits per second. So what does that mean for you? I don't care essentially how many transmitters, how many video sources are in your system. You're not going to have to, you're not, you're, you're really not going to be getting to a point where uh, you have to worry about stacking these network switches and exceeding the 1G fiber length that most of the network switches have. Uh, you know, uh, we'll show you the ones that we, we mentioned, the ones that have 10G, 20G, and 40G fiber links that you need on the 4K stuff when you're stacking them. But high compression, low bandwidth high latency 
400 milliseconds. That's a little under a half a second, um, which is honestly, it's very noticeable for video from audio. So again, the audio design consideration. In a sports bar, let's say, you can't take your cable sat box, have the HDMI feed into the encoder, and use the uh, left and right audio outs from the set-top box going directly into your amplifier audio distribution system. Why? That would not get, the audio doesn't get any of the network latency, but the video does, making the video 0.4 of a second behind. So our system design group will put, uh, will know that, uh, knowing this, will add additional HDMI uh, de-embedders, audio de-embedders, and an additional receiver for your audio zone, uh, decoder for your audio zone, so that now the audio is in sync with the video. And if that doesn't make sense, we're happy to discuss that with you. And again, we include it in our system designs team. Less than six watts PoE power per unit. So looking at our list of uh, uh, our technology partners for our verified network switches. Again, we actually started AV over IP with the hope and thought that, hey, all we have to do is say, these are the supported features. But it doesn't work that way, as we learned shortly later. Uh, some network switches may say they have IGMP, and they may end up, um, you know, really having poor handling of the IGMP. And we've seen that. And it may not be apparent, uh, immediately obvious. Uh, after age testing, one week, two weeks, then we start to see the IGMP deteriorate on some products. And those products, if those were good manufacturers, good partners, we told them, and they actually released firmware. Uh, resolving those issues and then we could add it to our list so it's a real cooperative effort between us and these business partners and currently we have 10 uh, well, well yeah 10 uh, network switch manufacturers it's not everything under those brands though so you got to go to our network switch guide to see uh, those listed uh, 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 models and how to set them up um, and that's always step number one is setting up your network switch now when you get these units, so the thing about AV over IP is, I'll, I'll refer to it now as a decentralized system. A decentralized system, meaning that uh, it's not just one unit. Now, if you're setting up a traditional matrix switcher, um, you just have one, one unit to interface with, right? And as great as this sounds, having four sources, and having uh, 42 displays in the scenario, uh, the application diagram from earlier, uh, that means you actually have to configure all 46 units one by one by one, setting the IP address, providing a friendly name so that our key digital app can uh, can uh, show you that name so that you know it's nice and user friendly GUI. Um, uh, applying additional parameters this is this part of a video wall there's a lot of settings in fact there's even two settings for networks uh, uh, addresses so this is very very important with us and actually this is what I was referring to earlier when we encountered an issue on one of our decoders um, they will reset each other if they detect a problem on the network and they can't ping each other uh, we have two IP addresses the main IP and the video IP so key digital, again, we're hardware, we're software. We knew we wanted to integrate our compass control system into these products. Each of these units is a three port master controller built in. And um, we knew that there was the communication of the video broadcast and we wanted that to be handled uninterrupted by the compass communication. And it's not just Compass. Even if you're not using Compass Control, every unit knows it will receive its configuration plus the switch configuration file for the overall system. Every unit knows about every other unit in our system. It makes it ultimately reliable, this redundancy, uh, this uh, dual uh, super redundancy that we call it. And so each unit actually acts as two IP addresses, just a single cable for this. It's like two computers though. Main IP address, 192.168.1.101. Video IP address, 192.168.1.201. This is a questionnaire that we ask you to configure or to uh, uh, submit when you place your purchase order. And we 
will pre-configure the entire system for you, even your network switch if you send it to us. Now, did we always do it this way? No, we did not. Um, but what happened is, you know, when you have to apply three, four, five settings for every single unit times 46 units, you're looking at 200 plus settings you have to apply. And if there's a mistake, it can be very hard to find if you're just working with us for the first time. And it's very hard for our tech, uh, tech support team to find remotely. And so we decided at no additional cost, we never raised the cost at that, at that point, at no additional cost, we're gonna set it up in the lab at Key Digital. We're gonna set up each unit according to how you want it to be set up. We're not only going to configure the units, we're also going to verify the system is working, catching, catching any kind of RMA type issues that might have occurred. And it's been hugely beneficial to you guys, the integrators, saving days and days of man hours for configuring systems, especially if it's your first time. All you have to do, they get a nice sticker on them, and all you have to do is go install them behind your monitors or in the rack. We even mount them on this really nice uh, rack shelving system for you with uh, locking washers. And um, so it's hugely beneficial for you guys. It's a very unique offering. And um, the other thing is it's been hugely beneficial to us, of course. Uh, if there is some kind of weirdness that has been identified by our technicians who are uh, setting these systems up, they're able to immediately show the software engineers that are involved with these projects, the, uh, the, the AV over IP products. They're able to immediately show them. And we've been able to work through uh, bugs with this. We've been able to add functionality to our system because of this. And perhaps better than all, we've been able to make the setup time go from multiple days to multiple hours through improvement of our software. And this is again the benefit of having a, being a hardware and software company all under one roof. So that if and when we decide that, hey, uh, this is something that we want our distribution partners to stock, we need to just train their people or our, our, our key partners in the field how to set the system up it's going to be foolproof and it's going to be quick and it's going to be as close to automatic as possible if and when that day should come. So again, step one, configure the network switch. Why? <laughs> Even if we set up all your units one by one, but you have your network switch, you didn't send it to us for configuration and you plug everything in all at once, you might have issues if you haven't set up that network switch first. So please, step one is always to set up your network switch. You follow the link for verified network switches document and we tell you right here Cisco IGMP setup you hit that link it'll jump you right in it's most of them are like five pages long mostly pictures and uh, and uh, you know very easy for you. you don't have to be an IT specialist to do this um, now but again we are happy to set up your network switch for you if need be send it over to key digital talk to your sales guys first um, this is all done, all of the setup for the Key Digital products using Key Digital Management Software, KDMS Pro, as we call it. And uh, this is where we set up our AV over IP. And this is also where all of our other units, uh, all of our other uh, systems are now configured. So this is really a universal configuration software that you'll use to set up your systems. Now, some of you guys are working with products that perhaps were not um, uh, that were that predated the key digital management software. So now, as we've released more and more new products, you're beginning to see that. And we're again trying to make the integrator's job easier and easier. You don't have to use type in on TerraTerm or PuTTY uh, line string commands for these things. It's all through a graphical interface. And we uh, we uh, also are now adding more and more products with USB. So you just plug in a USB because now we're seeing that some laptops don't even have network ports on them anymore. So we're trying to make it easier and easier for you guys and keeping up with the trends in, in, in the real world. Now, let's talk about that bandwidth calculation. Um, here's a real world example. I've got three 4K sources and I've got 
three high def, 1080p. Now let's say I have so many network switches, or excuse me, so many decoders that it exceeds one network switch. So I need to go to two network switches. Right here, four, 4K is, again, 850 megabits per second times three. I'm just gonna call that two and a half gig. Then we got three 1080p sources at 2.5. 2 I'm gonna round up again and call that one gig. So I'm now at 3.5 uh, gig for the content uh, from for for the streams from my encoders. So most network switches out there that are on our list even their fiber SFPs only support 1G uplink or 1G um, stacking as it's called. But if this is 3.5G of data, this is 1G is not going to cut it. So that's when we have to use our pro our systems, our, our our partners that have 10G, 20G, or even 40G SFP ports. And so we will um, we have a column in our network switch guide to tell you which of those network switches, uh, which network switches do support that. Um, now, so how are you going to control this? Well, I've shown you Key Digital Management Software Pro. And this is where I can actually set up each unit one by one, right? But we also have KDMS User. This is for your customers to run on a PC if they are an AVIT department at corporate or at a church, um, at schools, we see this, and they just want to control it from a PC. Uh, you have this system. So it's just, it scans, it finds your system, and it gives you a control panel for that. We also have the Key Digital app uh, that is free of charge. We'll scan the network and give you, again, a pre-built control. And you can even do really impressive uh, uh, control uh, functionality. I press the devices button, it will scan the network, it will find your Key Digital systems. I have multiple systems on our network here in the training room, of course. And you can even name each system. So that if I have conference room one, conference room two, training room, et cetera, you can do that. Additionally, though, we have our video wall control. It doesn't scan the network until you tell it to. I will say that uh, a lot of times the training room is uh, also um, an extension of our lab. Again, kind of putting ourselves in the real world. So, uh, so, so yeah, the user, uh, the the control of the video wall with that like finger drag um, when it's really rocking. Is a really fantastic user-friendly interface. Just dragging your finger like that is really, really good. So uh, uh, you know, you compare that to other methods of managing a video wall. Uh, the end users may not, you know, they probably look at that and have no. They they don't want anything to do with it compared to just dragging your finger across the iPad screen. Home run.